Citizen Lab and is going to dive into different case studies, including Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, and Argentina. and Argentina. So I'm really looking forward to your talk. Thanks very much for coming here tonight. So, I heiße Renata, es tut mir leid, ich, nur wenn ich, ich kann nur wenn ich Deutsch sprechen, aber nächstes Mal ich uh, will uh, auf Deutsch sprechen. Uh, so, uh, I am part of a network um, of a network of researchers from the Global South, and I think that it is a very interesting contribution from the Citizen Lab because you hear a lot of what's going on in Germany, you hear a lot of what's going on in the U.S., in the U.K., but you barely hear what's going on in these topics in different countries. And uh, to be honest, I think that uh, uh, countries in the Global South, especially countries in Central America, we have been like the uh, lab rats for many, many of the things uh, taking place now in, in countries like the European Union and, and in the US. Like many of the experiments around uh, surveillance technologies started there uh, during the dirty wars. And, and it seems that we do not learn the lesson. And it seems that uh, the normalization, as you will see here, the normalization of uh, surveillance is, uh, is, is very, very, very dangerous. And, and uh, examples like the examples that I will show you, I think that we should uh, raise awareness among, among us that if we lose uh, the privacy battle in one country, we lose it everywhere. So let's start with a short video. Si nos conocemos mejor, nos cuidamos más. Por decisión política de la presidenta Cristina Fernández de Kirchner y la integración de los ministerios del interior y de seguridad, se pone en marcha un nuevo sistema para la identificación de los ciudadanos. El Sistema Federal de Identificación Biométrica. La identidad de una persona está conformada por un conjunto de rasgos propios del individuo que lo caracterizan frente a los demás, entre ellos el rostro y las huellas digitales. La tecnología digital, junto al aporte del equipo humano, nos permiten implementar un sistema de avanzada de nivel internacional que asegura la identidad insustituible de las personas. Ahora vos, sos vos. Nuestra firma, nuestros ojos, la manera que tenemos de caminar, son características que nos diferencian y nos hacen únicos. El rostro, las huellas digitales. Un IFIS es un sistema automático de identificación de estas características. Estamos hablando de tecnología para identificar características físicas y de comportamiento humano. Para poder aplicar esta tecnología, es muy importante la etapa de recolección de datos. Es la base con la que trabaja este sistema. A través del Registro Nacional de las Personas, la toma de huellas digitales y la fotografía para el pasaporte y el nuevo DNI son incorporadas a una base de datos inteligente. El sistema verifica que esas imágenes no existan asociadas a otro ciudadano. En el momento de la identificación, el sistema debe responder a dos preguntas si la persona es quien dice ser y quién es esa persona. El sistema realiza el proceso de identificación en forma totalmente automática y en pocos segundos ejecuta la búsqueda sobre una base de datos de millones de huellas y rostros previamente registrados asociados a un número de DNI. Más de 10 millones del nuevo DNI y más de un millón del nuevo pasaporte fueron transferidos a la base de datos de las fuerzas de seguridad. Estos datos forman un soporte que optimiza los tiempos de control. Este sistema puede ser utilizado para diferentes aplicaciones. Por ejemplo, en un accidente podemos identificar a personas sin documentación. Es una herramienta indispensable en prevención de delitos de suplantación de identidad, tanto de tipo económico como de trata de personas. 
para el fortalecimiento de los controles migratorios, para que cada persona que ingrese al país sea la misma que sale y para que esa persona sea quien dice ser. Además, el sistema multiplica la posibilidad de esclarecimiento y resolución en casos post-delito, otorgando un soporte científico para los casos criminales. El reconocimiento fisionómico del nuevo sistema permite proyectar el rostro de una persona a través del tiempo, aumentando así las posibilidades de encontrarla. De esta manera, las fuerzas de seguridad de todo el país quedan integradas en una misma base de datos, pudiendo efectuar un mayor control sobre los ciudadanos con prontuario y protegiendo la identidad del resto de la ciudadanía. Si se realiza un chequeo en vivo con el EIFIS, un menor con pedido de paradero podría ser detectado en el acto, más allá si presenta un DNI adulterado o falso. La alta tecnología del sistema permitirá en el futuro integrar datos de voz, iris ocular e incluso del ADN. Es importante destacar que este sistema se desarrolló con la colaboración y el intercambio tecnológico con Cuba, con lo cual logramos un sistema de avanzada a muy bajo costo. La implementación del nuevo sistema es parte del programa de modernización de la investigación científica del delito, generando una arquitectura integrada de tecnología para las fuerzas policiales y de seguridad, nacionales y provinciales. Seguimos trabajando, seguimos trabajando para fortalecer nuestra identidad, incorporando tecnología al servicio de una mejor calidad de vida. Con el Sistema Federal de Identificación Biométrica, el Estado incorpora soluciones de identidad para hacer de nuestro un país más seguro. Seguridad de saber quiénes somos y a dónde vamos. Si nos conocemos mejor, nos cuidamos más. Sorry, so I, I feel I feel very bad. I think that it was so politically incorrect to show uh, a video of Argentina after the World Cup, but I think that is fair. Like uh, they are really the champions in surveillance, it seems. Uh, uh, the, the serious the serious thing uh, about this uh, situation is that uh, Argentina is probably the most gentle country in terms of surveillance in in the region, and and so. Um, So, um, yeah. Sorry, something happened? Okay. So, to understand why uh, this video is very dangerous and it's very, very, very bad narrative around surveillance, we have to remember that thousands of thousands of disappeared people in Argentina. That, that's why the issue of identity and knowing who is who is very, is very delicate topic in Argentina. Uh, as you might be aware of, uh, Operation Condor, uh, an operation done in uh, most of the South American countries, left thousands of thousands of disappeared suspects. Very, very similar to what's going on now in the Middle East. Uh, you, just your affiliation or every uh, even loose uh, connection to certain groups will warranty that you will be like banished. And, and so the, the surveillance, the culture of surveillance is a practice of Latin American states from long time ago. And it was uh, a very sophisticated, uh, sophisticated way of surveillance. When, uh, when uh, we look at the history of Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil, uh, and Guatemala, El Salvador, and so on, and the truth commissions, and what the truth commissions have found, uh, you will see the early systems of surveillance and very concrete, uh, concrete narratives on how surveillance led to disappearances, sur surveillance led to torture, surveillance le led to the destruction of uh, political parties, of groups, of citizens, and so on. And it seems that we do not learn from history. And it seems that citizens uh, buy into this narrative of, oh, we, we, we are good, we are the state, we are doing this just to protect you, not to control you, because we, are, we just want to make sure that the bad guys will not uh, mess up with you. Um, so this, this is basically what was going on in Latin America like uh, 30 years ago, 30 to 40 years ago. Um, all publications uh, were under control, uh, th even monitoring the imports and exports of paper 
and uh, where those uh, uh, where the paper to print was uh, heading to was uh, was uh, heavily monitored. The border uh, system was super uh, monitored. Um, there was uh, uh, lots of uh, control on on ideas, and if if you if you apply what was going on then to what's going on now, that means the internet. How how uh, if. Uh, a regime will install in Latin America or anywhere. It will it will start with this kind of control, and and um, uh, basically uh, at that time, um, if you read uh, this censorship, confiscation, the burning of uh, the burning of books, and so on. I, I don't see it very different of what's going on now after the Snowden revelations in certain countries of the West. And it's quite surprising that uh, we see the same thing happening again in front of our eyes without even moving a finger or even acting in a meaningful way to stop it. Uh, so uh, the French were very involved in the, in the surveillance practices and in the training of uh, police elements on... on, on both torture techniques and surveillance te techniques. And when the US, when the president Jimmy Carter imposed embargoes in different countries in Latin America, the Israeli were the suppliers of, of all, the, all the technologies and all the training that the US couldn't do directly. Uh, so, so uh, as we saw in the example of Argentina, this system that they have in place it is uh, synchronized and connected with different databases that they already had. The uh, identity card was installed, it was, uh, installed in Argentina uh, during the dictatorship and it was mandatory to be identified. And now a uh, president who supposedly comes from the other side and is very progressive and it is, it is uh, from the left. Uh, is promoting exactly the same uh, techniques that they were imposed in the past. And the very, very annoying thing is that even if you are a foreigner, if you enter Argentina when you are in the line uh, to, to go into the country, show your passport, you will see all the nice videos of the cute girls and boys saying, yes, you are now you, you have to leave your fingerprint. Uh, played again and again, like, it's like a, a video, like I, I wish I can obtain a copy, like welcome to Argentina, now you're entering the country and to keep you safe, we need you to leave your fingerprints. And there's no, it's not, no opt out. Any citizen, as, as when you go into the US, any citizen has to leave the fingerprints. The other worrying af aspect is the South-South cooperation element of it. Um, um, as you see, the software is designed by Cuba, and now is, uh, it has been exported to Nicaragua and, and to Bolivia, which are countries like, uh, uh, you know, some, uh, Bolivia, for example, now has a, a government that is not repressive, but in 10 seconds that changes, and, and uh, it, the, the, the governments go away, the technology stays and only increases. So it, it is very, it's very worrying to see this kind of cooperation happening. Now, um, this is just, I wish I could give you full details on the system and how it works, but it is not enough time. Uh, so I will move to the next country. I just, I'm just giving you like uh, some hints for you to look uh, more and I can share plenty of examples and details on the laws and on the technical aspects as part of my research. The next example is my favorite, because I see, uh, I see the somehow naive attempts in Europe to stop surveillance. Because in Colombia what happened was there was a very, very serious case in 2009, the Chusadas case, and it was um, uh, surveillance happening at the highest levels and at the most sensitive issues. The Supreme Court of Justice, uh, the whole court was under surveillance. Not only the whole, whole court, but the most important journalists in the country, the most important uh, authorities in the country, like all, all the, mo the most relevant, as we have seen with the Snowden revelations, the most relevant uh, people, the decision makers, were all monitored by the military. And so the court was very upset about that and, and ruled that the surveillance had to stop, that it has to be with judicial review, and you know the 13 principles, blah, 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 all, th all that was applied in Colombia. And there was a very firm ruling of the court. The office was dismantled. 
and and the and the, and the responsible people of that they were fired or into prison. What happened was, and what I suspect that will happen anyway, anywhere, is that instead of disappearing, surveillance went underground. And surveillance di uh, went underground through a very, uh, this, this kind of things, instead of operating inside the military facilities as they did before, or inside the intelligence facilities. What they did was uh, to operate inside internet cafes. So you will have like just yes, this hacker club, this computer and gamer club with uh, some uh, tattoos and things. And it, it was actually the place where the military was monitoring people from. And, and, and they were not only monitoring because they couldn't get like, a, for the military it's sometimes hard to catch up. And, and to get the best people, as you have seen, how hard for them is to recruit uh, people for the, for the NSA and to recruit people from different uh, uh, quasi-legal activities, uh, highly unethical activities. What they did is like to operate in this kind of hacker sp space, so they were offering uh, a lots of benefits to young kids who were going there to code. So they were using it both to their underground operation uh, space and also to to um, to monitor as well, and to uh, to recruit and get new people to join them, and this jeopardized the peace talks in Colombia recently. And that's another story. When you said, "Oh, surveillance is not harmful," blah 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 blah, that's a very concrete story. Like the 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 whole peace process in Colombia was about to fall apart because of the surveillance that was uncovered by by a very brave investigative journalist. Um, this, of course, you will not see it in the headline of, a, of, a, of the New York Times of, or The Guardian, like a, or maybe a tiny story, you know? But it's, it's very, very important to explore uh, what, can be, what can we do? I mean, in highly militarized countries, what, what can we do to really eradicate that this? And how can we prevent of these, of these uh, people who had this like uh, incredible power and who, like surveillance is not visible. I mean, it, it's, it's less and less visible and it is really complex to prove uh, what these people are, uh, are doing. So this is the case of, uh, of the fail of, uh, of a system to prevent that the surveillance continues. Of course, the first day they were like, oh, but this, this is scandalous, this is illegal, this cannot happen. The second day, the authorities changed the discourse and said, oh, oh, we are investigating, but we are not sure, but the evidence is not that hard. And so if you are in a, a cyber cafe in Latin America, especially in Colombia, be very suspicious of <laughs> what is actually that. Um, Mexico is my favorite case, I will say. There are so many things going on in Mexico. Uh, and and um, uh, after after some uh, some uh, uh, you know you might not know but the, the pre uh, one of the political parties there uh, it was a long 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 de pseudo democratic dict dictatorship uh, ruled the country for years and years and years after continuous corrupt uh, corrupted elections and then they they were out of power and now they are back into power. Mexico is also interesting because it has a, a very singular situation in terms of their uh, communications. They have a duopoly that controls all media practically. And one of the richest m men in the world controls both uh, the, let's say, all the television and printed publications and the also is the most important internet service provider. So all concentrated in one man. So. He's, uh, he's so powerful that he has uh, he bought part of the New York Times, and he also has uh, part of the Spanish-speaking media, the, the a media group uh, that uh, is the media group of El País. So he's a super, super powerful person in terms of controlling. And um, so Mexico was awarded one of the uh, most important awards on safe cities. Uh, every time that I, I hear the term smart cities and safe cities, it really is really scary uh, to see how 
good some people are to brand and to pack in a nice, with a nice envelope, very evil things. And so I, I, this smart cities and safe cities initiatives was one of these ev uh, very evil things. And they claim, they claim that the, because of the very sophisticated surveillance system that the, uh, they installed in Mexico City, that crime has dropped 32%. Of course, they do not offer the hard evidence linking exactly why uh, and, uh, and uh, profound study uh, explaining why the criminal networks stop operating in the city and move to very, very uh, various areas like the, the drug cartels uh, kind of spread across different uh, parts and also uh, uh, many of the Crime reduction has to do with uh, increasing investment in culture, in parks, in more activities for the families, in improving of the economy in Mexico in general, in Mexico City. So it, it, it is it's really dangerous to um, link it exactly with surveillance. That room that you see, is, you see is something that many Mexicans are very proud of. And it's one of the monitoring uh, rooms that they have because Mexicans in Mexico City are monitored 24 hours a day in centers like that installed in various zones in the city. This system synchronized all the 15,000 surveillance cameras that the state has, but not only that, they uh, signed a cooperation agreement with private security firms that if you want, if you are a private security firm, you can synchronize your camera as well. So it is uh, 15,000 15, uh, public uh, cameras, plus any other camera that, uh, that, uh, that uh, if, you, if you live in a building, if you live in a condo, you can, you can connect your camera there. They also have drones, of course, and they, and they, they have a collection uh, unit. That w that's, that's one of my favorite. They have some collection unit that will uh, monitor, that will uh, like, uh, suck all your data by just parking in front of the, the, the unit in front of your house. B uh, and that's legal and that does not require a warrant because you are not entering the house, physically the house of the person to collect the evidence. And, and um, the evil, evil, evil thing, and that's why I say, I say there is the big uh, Slim brother, is that all that the, the Carlos Slim, the guy who controls the television uh, and who controls the internet service provider, was awarded the contract to control the cameras as well. So, <laughs> so you have someone basically controlling the whole city of Mexico. And um, uh, of course, uh, Mexicans, they, they really exercise the right to protest and make in Mexico City, especially all the relevant demonst demonstrations in this big country will uh, head to, the, to, the, to Mexico City. That's why it is, uh, uh, systems like this, that this very sophisticated system, uh, and they have biometric I identifications at, at, uh, as all, mo almost all the countries in Latin America, but this, this very sophisticated system uh, combined with other illegal mechanisms that they have really can stop protest and really can uh, destroy the right to protest in a country with a huge tradition of protest. And uh, we are start uh, we are starting to see in it. Uh, many activists claim that they that uh, sometimes they organize in private. Of course, they don't do it in private. They do it on really dumbly on Facebook and, and so, but in private groups. Uh, uh, too often, they know that they have been monitored because the police is there before they arrive even. So it is all set up for the protests to be controlled and monitored by police, even with, with them uh, publishing any information about. Of course, it can be infiltration, but uh, after findings with the Citizen Lab that found a uh, 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 Finn Fisher software, and, that, and then um, because of a uh, corruption scandal, it was, uh, it was found that uh, uh, Mexico has a contract with, Finn with Gamma on Finn Fisher use. It, is not, it will not be uh, strange to discover that they have been monitoring activists. And so that's the situation in Mexico in, the, in, a, in a glance. People, they are very supportive of surveillance though. 
because they believe, of course, what media tells them. And what media tells them is because of the cameras, uh, crime is, uh, has reduced 32%. Uh, because of the cameras, we are doubling the cameras. So <laughs> it's, it's, it was absurd that there was even an article saying that in April this year, they are, uh, they are uh, putting the double of the cameras as, uh, uh, that they already have. Because with uh, double cameras, they will drop the, if, if they reduce 32% now, they will reduce 60%. So it is like a, they do the rate of reduction of crime, uh, a correlation with the number of cameras installed. And of course, that's big business for, for Big Slim Brother. So trends today in Latin America, just uh, quickly, um, is no longer a military domain before all this surveillance and monitoring was controlled by the military. But after the peace processes, what happened was that uh, the military uh, got weaker and dismantled many times, the intelligence units, because they were accused of torture and crimes against humanity. And uh, many of them, they were never prosecutor, prosecuted, there was an amnesty and so on. And so what they did was, uh, as retirement, they became the contractors who are selling these technologies now, who are implementing and offering private security services. And so uh, what uh, we have seen is that instead of aiding the military, the US and many other countries are helping the police. So you will see the levels of brutality that we, ha we had before in the military, now in the police, and the police forces are the ones uh, performing the surveillance. Um, there is no north-south divide or left-right divide. Don't believe, don't buy the Dilma propaganda. Like Brazil, Argentina, and, and Cuba, and Bolivia, and Ecuador surveil as much as the countries with the uh, uh, right-wing governments and are so hungry of these technologies as any other country and are so willing to implement it as any other country. Um, uh, we have seen also the very na the nastiness that we show at the very beginning of South-South uh, cooperation in surveillance issues. And in my home country, Guatemala, I see I see them uh, very interested in buying uh, Russian technologies and buying Indian technologies to, to, to find cheaper options. So there's a very diverse competitive market, let's say. And um, it, is inc it is only increasing and even local industries are born. Instead of uh, creating a safer, more private solutions, there's still no market for private, uh, the, there's very limited market for privacy in, in Latin America. But there's, a, a, because of the fear of crime and the increase of uh, crime, especially in cities, there's, there's a lot of, there's a securi constant securitization of security and people, even very poor people in, in uh, very marginal areas, you see them installing the camera outside the house. So, so yeah, um, um, I wish I could uh, talk maybe next time, uh, maybe in other place, uh, about um, about this in, in more detail because the, the smaller the country, the, most, the more nasty the policies become. Uh, just uh, uh, an anecdote, uh, one, a tiny little village of uh, 12,000 uh, inhabitants in my country, they don't have full access to water, but they have a full surveillance uh, system of cameras connected with the municipality. And uh, because they just have local TV, because the, the sign signal do not reach them, they, they ha have engaged recently in this very nasty habit because one of the channels of the local network is watching your neighbors, you know? And they are like hooked, like looking at, at, at it. it. It is really, really, really creepy. And, and so we can discuss it the ne next time. And, and I would like also to dis leave for the next time Brazil because uh, it, is, uh, it shows the example of how mega events all the damage that a mega event uh, does to a country on the global south, and all uh, and uh, how uh, an event like the World Cup or the Olympic Games or summits or summits um, um, leave technologies and leave uh, bad practices practices that are there to stay. Once the event is gone, once the international event is over, well, the surveillance is not over. It only gets more and more sophisticated. So let's discuss this.
this is my, my contact details. And um, I wanted to point it out something. P probably in here there are many experts, many techies, many people willing to volunteer time. Uh, especially in Colombia and Mexico. Activists, they don't have uh, the advanced skills that many of you have. And uh, people like Jacob Applebaum or the people at the Citizen Lab, they have contributed some time, but now they are in such high demand that, oh my God, that would be an issue in Colombia, who cares, you know? Uh, so uh, if you have time to volunteer on this, and I or if you are willing to look at the contracts or look at the systems or just be there to assist and give a second opinion about the issues, it will be great. And yeah, and if, I don't know if you have any question.